Hi, it's Ian here with another weekly marketing Q&A video. Uh, this week's question is from Rob who asks, how do you go about producing a two minute video for a website, the tools and techniques rather than the content? Really good topic. I think video is becoming increasingly important. That's why I'm doing these videos. So we'll explain the tools and the techniques after the break. Hi, welcome back. Let's get down to it. So as I said, video is becoming increasingly important. As you know, my main tool for nurturing relationships, building links with potential clients is through email marketing, but video gets you that bit extra. It's a lot more work, so I only really do one a week, but it gets across your personality. People get to see you, they hear you. It can build relationships much quicker, well worth looking into. Now, the first thing to look at when you're thinking about video for your website is the message you want to get across. I'm not talking here about your content. That's the most important thing, obviously, but also the style of your video, the format, the quality sends a message too. So if, for example, you were a professional speaker um, and you were kind of wanted to impress large corporates and get them to think that you'd be the right person to hire for their next big corporate event and you would really light it up, then not only do you have to impress with your content in the video, but also um, the style of the video, how professionally it's shot, they're going to make judgments about you as a professional speaker based on that. You probably want to go for a very professionally shot video. If, on the other hand, you were a blogger who taught people how to make money in their pyjamas, then you can easily get away with a little webcam video shot in your bedroom because that's kind of the style that you're in. You're not saying that you're some rich multi-million dollar a billionaire sitting on a beach somewhere. You're just teaching people how to make money in their pajamas. It's entirely appropriate that you are in your pajamas when you make those videos. Most of us are probably somewhere in between. Um, you know, we we the the content is the main thing we're trying to get across with our videos. But it is important we kind of look the part um, that clients watching the video, they're going to make some snap judgments about, about you based on kind of your appearance and also, of course, the quality of the video. So you don't want it to be kind of dingy and amateurish looking like, you know, your, your young 12 year old kid has made, made, made it today. It could well be a, a video from You've Been Framed or, or America's Funniest Videos. So you do need a certain level of professionalism. So that's the style of video and the technology and the techniques I'm going to talk about today. I have to say, if you're only really making one video, the main one video for your website or a handful of videos, and you do want it to look professional, then probably the easiest thing to do is to get a professional to make it. So go along to that professional studio, um, get them to do the video for you. It'll come out looking really good. Um, and it's probably going to be cheaper than investing in all sorts of equipment if you're only going to make one or two videos. Now, if you're going to make videos on an ongoing basis like I am, then you might want to look at your own equipment. So when it comes to equipment for video, you really need three things. You need video, obviously, you need to be able to record the video. You need audio and you need lights or lighting. Now, surprisingly enough, the biggest place that most people go wrong that makes their videos look bad or that people just don't want to watch them isn't with the video itself. It's with the audio or the lights. And that's because pretty much any camcorder, any modern smartphone, any HD webcam is capable of taking high enough quality video um, to, to do a little web, web video just like this one. This is being done on a webcam. Um, however, um, most camcorders, for example, or webcams don't have good enough um, built-in microphones, for example, to be able to, to, to sustain a web video. It's going to be crackly or people aren't going to be able to hear you very well. There's going to be lots of background noise. And that's really going to put people off. Or if you don't get the lighting right, it's going to look dim and dingy, gray, grainy, um, weird shadows. It's going to look very amateurish. So actually, these things are the places where most people go wrong. So let's run through each of those um, um, areas and see what your options are. So with a video, as I've said, pretty much any modern camcorder will do for video quality. Um, however, you, may, you probably want to look for one that has a little socket for an external microphone so that you can feed a lavalier or other microphone in to get good audio. If you can't, if you've already got a camcorder, you don't want to invest in a new one, um, you've already got a decent camcorder that doesn't have an external mic socket, then what you can do is you can record the sound on your iPhone, for example, or your Android phone using a lavalier mic that fits into that. Uh, there's one called uh, the Smart Lav Plus, maybe 
made by Rody um, that works with the iPhone and, and most Androids. That gives you really good quality audio. Or you can use a little digital sound recorder like the Zoom um, H1. That works great as well. You can attach a lavalier mic to that. Or if you're close to your computer, you can use um, any mic that you would use for podcasting purposes. Um, I use a Blue Yeti mic. That's what I'm speaking into right now. Um, I'm about six foot away from it, but just boosting the sound afterwards, it's easily loud enough. So get a camcorder, ideally an external mic socket to plug a Lavalier mic in, um, but you don't have to, you can use an external recorder. You can absolutely use an iPhone or any kind of modern smartphone. The video quality on the, about the iPhone 5 onwards is easily good enough for fairly short range videos. Obviously you're not gonna make a giant movie out of it, although some people have used iPhones for movies, um, but at short range or especially a little close-up video only a couple of feet away for a head and shoulder shot, it's easily good enough. If you're only a couple of feet away as well, the internal mics on the iPhones and things and on a camcorder, a webcam, are gonna be good enough actually. It's only when you're a bit further away, about six foot or further away, that you need to use those external mics. So an iPhone or smartphone is fine, as is a um, high quality webcam, an HD webcam. So I'm using right now the Logitech C920 webcam. That's the webcam of choice uh, for people who make videos for the web. It's very good, high quality. It's about hundred pounds, I think. Uh, it's been around for a couple of years, works really well. Has half decent microphones, but usually I plug into my podcasting mic, as I've said, but it does really good um, video just like this. So that's the video side. The audio side I've already hinted at. So either you want to plug an external Lavalier mic in, so that's one of those ones that kind of clips here. It's absolutely fine if you're doing studio-based videos like this, as you mostly will, or even kind of outside, but where the camera's fairly close to you, to use a wired Lavalier. So I use the um, Audio-Technica ATR3350. It's only 20 pounds. Um, it's probably about $30, isn't it? Easily good enough quality for, um, for, for this sort of work. Um, there are plenty of other higher quality options you can go for as well, but I just use that one. Um, or as I said, if you don't have an external mic socket, um, you can use something like a Zoom H1 or your iPhone, put it in your pocket with a little Lavalier running up here. The other alternative is to use a boom mic. Now a boom mic's pretty good because it's an easier setup than kind of wiring yourself up with a Lavalier. Um, so I'll often use a boom mic if I'm just a few feet away um, from a camera. Um, the Rode a video mic is a great one for that. It's probably about hundred pounds, I think, for that or a bit less. Um, and you can just plug that in the back of your camcorder and that will work. If you begin to get further than about 10 feet away, it becomes a bit echoey because obviously it's pointing at you, but it's picking up the surrounding sound as well. Um, you find Lavalier mics are a bit hissier, but um, they're only picking up the sound from around here. Um, so that's audio. Um, yeah, podcasting mic, as I've said, I use the, the, the Yeti, um, the Blue Yeti mic. Any decent quality podcasting mic is probably good enough if you're only a few feet away from the sound. Now lights, for lighting, you'll often hear people recommend that you could just use those kind of inspection lamps you use to look under your car and stuff like that. I tried that, I've got a bunch downstairs that I never use because an inspection lamp, um, it's a halogen lamp and the, the temperature of the light is not the same as natural daylight. So it tends to make anything uh, look kind of, any, any white colors look kind of yellowy. So the surrounding whites, the whites on a flip chart, my face, for example, all goes a bit yellowy under that light. Um, so it, it tends not to work very well. You're better off going for proper video light. So what you wanna be looking for on eBay or Amazon or any decent shop there, probably you'd be paying about between 100 and 200 pounds or 100, 200 dollars and you want to get a video softbox kit. Usually they come in threes. So you've got two big ones and a one on a kind of extended st stand. So you, often you have two pointing at you and one kind of pointing you know, at the sides and one pointing straight at your face. Um, when you're doing stuff like this, where you're on a, a flip chart, one of the things with lighting, either a flip chart or a whiteboard, etc., is you have to be wary of pointing the, the, the light straight at you because you tend to get a bit of glare coming back. We're probably still getting a bit of glare off this shiny bit of the board here right now, but it's not bad at all. And that's because I've taken my softbox lights and I've bounced them off the ceiling. And because this room is painted white, deliberately, um, a matte white, then it reflects the light around um, and, and everything lights up. I don't need to point the light straight at me. If you're, uh, the place where you're videoing is a different color, you might need to point the light straight at you, in which case doing a kind of, certainly a whiteboard video will be difficult. You'll get hot spots where the lights are reflecting. Flip charts a bit better. Um, or you might just want to stand there against a kind of a you know, neutral background, etc., without a whiteboard or flip chart and do something. Um, now, if you're doing a more of a head and shoulder shot with a webcam, something like that, um, then you can get away with usually 
um, fairly simple lighting. So these are modern LED video lights. They're really cheap. This was about £20. They're just powered by battery and they usually have a little stand to attach them to a camera. By the way, any, uh, any DSLR um, camera will be fine as well. That'll be high enough quality. I should have said that when we covered camcorders. They have a little attachment um, allows them to fit onto the top of a camera or you can attach a shoe that, that allows them to go on top of a tripod. Um, and for just if for something like that where they're just illuminating your face they're absolutely fine the stuff behind you won't be well lit but often that doesn't matter if you're doing a head and shoulder shot in fact if it's in a little bit of darkness it doesn't matter at all it helps put the focus on you so those are the lights um, important to get decent lights if you know if the lighting looks grainy funny shadows etc that's really the sign of quite an amateurish video it may well put people off finally um, post-production software so what do you do for post-production? So for software, you need three things again. So I'm just write down post-production. First thing you need is editing software. Undoubtedly, you will make mistakes. Bare minimum, you'll have to cut off the top and tail of your video, even if you do it all in one continuous cut. Um, you can edit with stuff like um, Windows Movie Maker or iMovie for free on the Mac or the PC. They're usually fine. Um, what works a little bit better, a bit easier to use, I find, and have more features are either Camtasia Studio on the PC or ScreenFlow on the Mac. Now, both of those um, tools are designed to capture um, your screen. So when you're doing something on the screen, they'll capture what's on the screen, but they also have editing tools. So you can import uh, movie files from your camcorder, from the, from the webcam, from your iPhone, and edit them. And you can put in fancy transitions, you can overlay things, etc. So I usually recommend for most people either ScreenFlow or Camtasia Studio because not only does it let you capture, you know, what's going on the screen if you're doing a presentation, for example, or demonstrating something on the screen, it's also got pretty nifty editing and good export capabilities to produce MP4 files and compress them and stuff like that. Um, that those bits of software also allow you to do effects. So that would be, for example, transitions between scenes, zooming in, zooming out, jump cuts. Um, a jump cut is where you just go zoomed in or out or move left or right without actually the slow kind of movement. You just do it immediately. Jump cuts are great for covering when you fluff your lines. You just kind of restart at the point before you before you fluffed it and you do a cut between the two. And because you've jumped from a, a close up to a, to a long shot or vice versa, no one could tell anything's actually changed. Um, the other thing you might want to do for effects is get a little intro or an outro like I have um, for this video. Um, I just get those for $5 on Fiverr. You know, they're really simple to make. You specify what you want. You give them your logo and they just produce some kind of stinger or intro. If you just Google video intros um, on Fiverr, you can usually get them for $5 or $10 gets you an HD version. Um, certainly mine came from Fiverr. Um, finally, you may well need to do audio corrections. So what I mean by that is, um, if like me, you're recording from a podcasting mic that's a little distance away, you'll have to increase the volume and that might introduce some noise into it. Or if you've got a lavalier mic, often a lavalier mic has a little bit of hiss. Um, there, there are all sorts of tools you can do to kind of use to kind of manually try and do that. These days, I just feed everything into something called Auphonic, A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C, Dot com. It's a free tool. I think it was developed by the Swiss government. Um, it's kind of like an artificially intelligent sound mixing booth. Does it all for you. Just say reduce noise, equalize, e equalize the volume across the whole thing. And you, you upload your, your audio and it just does it for you and outputs the file. You can do two hours of audio for free every month. It's really great for noise reduction, reducing a hiss, for example. Or if you've got two people speaking and one happens to be louder than the other, you put it through, it equalizes the, the volume level so it all comes out the same. So Orphonic.com is really good. That's basically about it. I've given you a whole bunch of information. Um, I will overlay the names of those um, tools and, and, and brands and things on the video so you can kind of read them off and pause them. Um, but I hope that's going to be really useful for you. It is pretty easy these days to produce videos just like this. They can have quite a big impact, help you to build a relationship. As I say, if you're only going to do one or two and you want to make them look really professional, go with a professional. Go to their studio, pay someone who knows what they're doing the money to make a really good video for you. But if you're going to be doing little casual videos like this on an ongoing basis, you know, either head and shoulder stuff, blogging um, type uh, kind of to camera, or you're going to do a bit further away, like on a flip chart, or you're standing outside or in front of a, you know, in front of a neutral background or whatever, or sitting at a desk, um, then they're easy to do with minimal equipment, either the camcorder you've got, um, with, with, um, with a microphone of some sort, a decent, you know, HD webcam, 
cost you a you know hundred pounds, hundred dollars, or um, your your smartphone. Um, all all capable of working, but make sure you get the audio and the lighting right. That's really the key. That's it. Cheers.